This video covers the answer to question 8 of my second global warming quiz. Over 30,000 scientists can't be wrong, can they? It was such a long time ago that I posed the question, perhaps we should first remind ourselves what the question actually was. Question 8. True or false? Over 30,000 scientists say that global warming is not happening. This is in fact a question about the so-called Oregon Petition. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. That became so discredited that they had to rename it. It's now called the Global Warming Petition Project. It is the same thing, but they've managed to clear up some of the more obvious problems, like the fraudulent paper they used to justify the original petition. The paper was made to look like a peer-reviewed paper from the National Academy of Sciences. It even had a false publication date, volume ID, and page numbers. The only problem was that the National Academy had nothing to do with it. They even went as far, for the first time in their history, of issuing a statement disowning the paper. Here is their unprecedented response. The National Academy of Sciences Council would like to make it clear that, that this petition has nothing to do with the National Academy of Sciences and that the manuscript was not published in the proceedings of, of the National Academy of Sciences or in any other peer-reviewed journal. Apart from the question of why they use such unethical behaviour to try to make their point, we'll see why all of this is important later on. Now let's return to my true or false question, which boils down to three basic points. Does the petition say that global warming is not happening? Are the signers actually scientists with the knowledge to have an informed scientific opinion on this issue? And are there more than 30,000 people who signed the petition? Well, on the last point, they claim that 31,487 scientists have signed the petition, which says they seem to be home free on that point. So let's address the issue of what the petition actually says. The first paragraph is a series of unsubstantiated political opinions about how the proposed Kyoto cuts in carbon emissions are so stringent that it will harm everything and everybody. Oddly, the same people in different venues claim that the Kyoto Accord was so weak that it would actually make no difference to the carbon emissions. Only in politics can you have it both ways. The second paragraph is about the science, which is what we are dealing with here. So let me read what it says. There is no convincing scientific evidence that human-released carbon dioxide, methane or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of the Earth's climate. Moreover, there is substantial scientific evidence that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce many beneficial effects upon the natural plant and animal environments of the Earth. Three key phrases are undefined, left to the imagination of the reader. Catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and climate disruption. By that, do they mean the day after tomorrow scenarios? Well, almost nobody believes that stuff. And the last phrase is many beneficial effects. That does not even say whether the beneficial effects outweigh the negative effects. Unless by beneficial they mean that, that we make this planet so uninhabitable that we are forced to build spaceships and go out and explore the universe. So it's all rather vague. But one thing is certain. But nowhere does it say that anthropogenic global warming is not happening. It is just saying that it won't be catastrophic. Also, on this first point alone, the answer to question 8 is false. But let's push on and see how well we do on the other points. According to the Petition Project's own figures, there are 31,487 scientists who have signed up. Wow, that seems like a huge number of scientists. Over 9,000 of them with PhDs. Again, very impressive. And 39 of which are climatologists. Well, that's a very persuasive... Excuse me, show me that last figure again. They've only managed to sign up 39 people who claim to have a PhD in climatology. Those are the people who know most about the climate. And there are tens of thousands of them in the United States. But how impressive are the other numbers? 31,000 out of how many eligible people? If you check the various employment surveys, they say about 23 million people have bachelor's, master's or PhDs in engineering and science in the United States. But that is not all the people that the petition project allowed to sign the petition. They include people in the medical industry, mathematicians, computer engineers and, and retirees. Let's say there are 30 million that are eligible as a rough guess on the conservative side. Thus 31,000 only represents one in a thousand of the eligible participants. Now that is people who claim to be climatologists, PhDs, or even scientists. Very thoroughly do they check. There have been several studies by various news organizations which indicate that their checking process is fundamentally flawed. 
But I thought I'd try it out for myself. And that is why this video has been so long in coming out. I've been researching the issue. This is what I did. I went to Petition Project's own website and selected the option List of Signers by State. Then chose a relatively small state that I knew had a disproportionately large number of research scientists with PhDs. The reason why I chose a small state that limits the possibility of duplicate names. From that list I extracted all those that claimed to have a PhD. I then eliminated those with common names like John Smith or Bill Gray or whatever, so again I would reduce the chance of finding a duplicate name. This left me with a long list of PhD unique names in a relatively small geographic area. I then got the computer to randomly select about half the names, which turned out to be over a hundred, and researched those names to try to verify their qualifications. To do this I first googled their full names. If I could not find them there, I checked in the yellow pages in our local library. Now when you do a PhD you generally produce several publications along the way, and if nothing else the contents of your thesis are published. So I checked the scientific literature for authors by that name. The results of this survey enabled me to classify the names of each of my 100 plus signers into several different categories. If the only reference to that name was as a signer of the Oregon petition, I classified them as untraceable. If I found the person but there was no indication of any academic record and they were in a job that doesn't really usually require a PhD, I classified them as no PhD. These are jobs like real estate agents, a hotel manager, a teacher, two artists, a writer and even a funeral director. I reserved a third category, medical, for those with MDs, dentists and even a veterinarian. Those with various types of engineering qualifications in mechanical, electronic or computer engineering were classified as engineers. Fifth category was other. Those were people that were retired. Politicos, strangely enough all of them were Republicans. Businessmen, military, several were dead. The sixth category were scientists that would have a sufficient scientific background to have an informed opinion on climate change. People like physicists, astronomers, geophysicists, meteorologists and so on. So how did it turn out? Well, even I was surprised at the results. More than half the sample were in the medical profession or engineering, thus had no particular expertise in the physical sciences, and in many cases didn't have a PhD. 11% of the sample were untraceable, and in the further 11% definitively did not have a PhD. 17% were in the other category. That tiny light blue wedge is all we have for physical scientists. 5%. That's it. 5%. Now you don't have to believe me on this. Why don't you do exactly the same thing? Go to your own state, select the names in the way that I did, and start checking. It's a rather laborious and long process if you do it thoroughly, but I'm sure you're going to find a very similar result. So we're not talking about 9,000 PhDs, but in reality about 450 PhDs which makes our proportion of our science community even smaller again. That means that most of the people that are signing this aren't scientists. So on a second point, the answer to question 8 is also judged to be false. So let's briefly return to the issue of whether more than 30,000 scientists have signed the petition. From my survey, we find that over 10% of the signers are untraceable, which is very similar to results from other surveys of the past. A similar percentage lied about their qualifications or may well be bogus. So if you add those to the other category, we could, with reasonable justification, discount a third of the signatures. There is the point that I brought up at the very beginning, about the fraudulent justification of the paper, was used to entrap nearly 20,000 of the original signers. So in my opinion, the answer to the question 8 is also false on the over 30,000 point as well. In summary then, question 8 fails on all of these three basic points. There are not 30,000 valid signatures. They are mostly not scientists, and, it, and in fact include a very small proportion of informed scientists, and at no point does the petition claim that global warming is not happening. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.